one of the things I've really enjoyed discovering from this homologation special series is learning just how far car manufacturers are willing to push the legal limits of what's allowed on the roads in order to succeed in their chosen area of motorsport. Few manufacturers have exploited the opportunities offered by homologation rules more successfully than Mitsubishi and few cars exemplify that more typically than this, the Pajero Evolution. The Mitsubishi Pajero, or Shogun as perhaps it was better known, was first released in 1981. It was a short wheelbase, all-wheel drive utility vehicle fitted with either a 2.0-litre or a 2.3-litre turbocharged diesel engine. It wasn't long until Mitsubishi realised the sporting potential of their new truck when privateers started entering it into off-road and rallying competitions. The second generation also saw the introduction of some pretty advanced new technology. Super Select four-wheel drive allowed electronic programming of the differential for high range, low range and locked settings. Multi-mode ABS meant that the anti-locking brake system could be active even with the center locked diff. Finally, electronically controlled dampers all around were standard, giving you the choice of hard, medium or soft settings to further tailor the Pajero's ride according to the road surface it was on. Again, this was all pretty revolutionary stuff at the time. In 1993, two new power plants were offered. The first was a 2.8-litre turbocharged diesel engine, but the second was a much more exciting 3.5-litre, 24-valve, dual overhead camshaft V6 that gave the short wheelbase Pajero some serious poke. Now, throughout the 80s and 90s, the first generation Pajero was already being successfully entered into the Paris-Dakar Rally. However, for 1997, Mitsubishi decided to withdraw from the top-level T1 category and enter the production-based T2 class. Naturally, a run of homologation specials would now be required, so step forward the second generation Pajero. Common to all homologation specials, weight saving was again the name of the game, with panels such as the front bonnet being recast in lightweight aluminium. Specifically, with a widened track front and rear and accompanying wheel arches that gave the car a fabulously mean look. The outcome? Well, in 1997, the Pajero Evolution not only won the T2 production base class at the Paris Dakar Rally, but it also won overall, beating even the premier T1 class for heavily modified purpose built cars. In 1998, it took the top three places overall, finishing a whopping five hours ahead of their nearest competitor. All in all, the Pajero Evolution has collected more victories in the Dakar than any other car in any class. A phenomenal achievement. If I'm honest, it didn't feel like the Pajero was best suited to the hard paved roads up in the hills earlier on. But now we've found our way onto an off-road rallycross course with mixed tarmac and sand. And when it gets loose, it gets fun. With the car weighing nearly two tons and having only 280 horsepower, it's not gonna set your pants on fire when you boot the throttle, but get it onto a loose surface and it really comes into its own. You just feel like it's so hardy and robust, you can chuck it over the jumps, throw it into the corners. I don't like this so much, but back on the tarmac now, there's a huge amount of body roll. It feels like the rear tires just want to tuck underneath and spit you off. 
But that's not what this car is about. It's about this. The loose, the gravel, and the sand. I don't really like auto boxes, but I'm told that this is what was chosen by many at the entrance of the Pajero into the Paris Dakar. So it's the automatic boxed car that's really cherished by purists today. It's got a naught to 60 time of about eight and a half seconds and apparently has a top speed of about 130, none of which really matter though when you're on the loose because it's much more about finding some kind of traction blended with a perfect balance just to rotate the car through the corners and as much as I really don't enjoy the car on these tarmac sections, it really feels like the rear end just wants to tuck underneath. As soon as I get onto the sand and the loose gravel, it comes into its own. It's got just enough rigidity in the chassis to give you a nice drift through the apex and yet just enough soft absorption to keep the traction where you need it without skating off the road. I think in standard road form, the Pajero is pretty basic, but it's got the really solid underpinnings needed to be a competitive off-road rally car. If I had one, I'd want to start modifying it. Getting it, oh, getting it fitted with a louder exhaust, a bit more power pumping out of that turbocharger, nicer steering wheel. Oh. I was going to say better suspension, but actually, given the varied terrain that we've got here on this brilliant off-road course, I think it's pretty good. From what I can tell, the Pajero seems to be one of those cars that really excites those who know, but doesn't even register as a blip on the radar for those who don't. I've got a lot of motor racing friends who lit up with excitement when they heard that I was going to be testing this car and I have to say I didn't quite understand why. When it arrived this morning I totally get the looks. It's got a great stance, it looks aggressive and yet it's inconspicuous enough to drop the kids at school if you can find yourself a nice off-road back route home then it opens up a whole new level of fun.